If you've ever been in a relationship with a narcissist, then you probably already know about gaslighting. But just in case you don't, it's a psychological term that was derived from an old movie in which a man tried to make a woman feel crazy by moving stuff around and the term actually comes from the fact that he was dimming the gas lights in the house and making her feel like she didn't remember doing it herself, telling her she's imagining things. But in psychology, it means that someone's bullied you or pushed you into thinking your reality isn't real. They, they've made you doubt your reality, doubt everything that you know to be true, your perceptions, your memories, your feelings, all this stuff. And they do this in order to bully and control you. The thing is that gaslighting is kind of like a poison. It's kind of like a poison that kind of permeates slowly and it makes you feel like you don't know which end is up and what's going on. It's, it's what they call crazy making. It's something else. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 red flags that you're being gaslighted. Today we're going to talk about seven different ways, different techniques that narcissists use to gaslight us in toxic relationships. This will help you to better understand the person you're dealing with, better understand what you've been through, and hopefully not go through it again. Knowledge is power, my friend. So today at queenbeing.com, we're going to discuss how to deal with gaslighting in your relationship or in any relationship. So let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and we'll get going. They engage in gaslighting in order to create a reaction. Whether it's anger, frustration, sadness, they're trying to get a reaction out of you, the person they're dealing with. When that person reacts, when you react, the narcissist wants you to feel uncomfortable. So they will do that. They want you to feel insecure. They make that happen by acting like your feelings aren't normal and aren't rational. I hear this from my clients all the time. I, I just spoke to a client today who she's doing so great with her recovery, but she still has those moments of... Am I right? She doubts herself and we all do it. We all have the, the ability to doubt ourselves. So the best thing that you can do is change your mind. Gaslighters make you feel crazy because they act like your reaction to their abuse is not rational. Sure, the signs you've been gaslighted, they might seem obvious to some people, but the fact is that while you're being manipulated by a narcissist, you can't always see the proverbial forest for the trees, my friend. It is what it is, because when you're in it, it's hard to see exactly what's happening. Six months from now, if you left your narcissist today, you could turn around and look back and go, oh yeah. If you find yourself feeling like you might be a little crazy, which is part of the whole gaslighting thing, or even if you're aware that it's happening and you wanna recognize it while it's happening, because in my opinion, that'll help you cope with it better. It has worked for me in the past. Understanding the signs are just the first step to making your life a little better. You know, discovering what you're dealing with. Obviously, knowing the signs to gaslighting, it's going to make your life better. When you're aware of the behaviors that cause the narcissist to engage in gaslighting, you can react differently and change the course of the outcome. What are the signs that you're being gaslighted? I'm going to share 10 of them with you, the top 10. First of all, your fears are used against you. That's number one. Many narcissists are very charming as we all know. Not all of them are. We've got our covert narcissists and stuff like this, but most of them are quite charming in their own way, at least when they want to be. Now, a lot of times they'll listen to every word you say and they'll file away those vulnerabilities that you share with them for later use against you. For example, if you said to a narcissist, you know what, I feel a little bit insecure, I'm a little bit overweight or whatever, or even if you're not overweight, I feel insecure about my weight. The narcissist will later make discreet pokes at your weight, discreet at first. If you're in a romantic relationship with that person, they might even go ahead and make comments about other people who in their opinion or yours look better than you. So if you think you're too fat, they might look at thinner women. If you think you're too thin, they might look at thicker women. You feel me? Because everybody has a different thing they're into. Inevitably, if you've cons complained about your weight to the narcissist, whatever you are is the thing, they'll be looking at the opposite just to make you feel insecure about yourself. Your fears are used against you in gaslighting. That's the number one sign. Remember, the narcissist has an ultimate goal and that is to make you doubt yourself because that makes you more dependent on him or her. Number two, you don't know your own mind. What do I mean by that? Some narcissists will claim to know 
what you're thinking or what other people are thinking. And if you deny that you think what they think you think, they might just think you're lying and tell you so to your face. They might just make a little face or gesture, oh yeah, right, whatever, to indicate it. Or in the most extreme cases of NPD, they might actually tell you that you're lying and accuse you of lying to yourself. And no, I am not playing games. Y'all know it's true. Because of course, as narcissists, they can't be wrong even about what the private thoughts inside your own head are. Yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Number three, you don't know what's normal. If you are regularly being told that things are normal when deep down inside of yourself you know that they're not, you're likely the victim of gaslighting, my friend. For example, let's say your toxic boss says, hey, can you lie to this client about the safety of this item that you're about to sell them? And you go, no, that's again, that's not ethical. When you refuse, the boss might go, dude, lady, all employees lie on behalf of their employers. And if you don't want to be a team player, well, psh, maybe you should find another position. The same could go in a marriage. If a, you know, a husband and a narcissistic wife, let's say, well, the narcissistic wife might say, hey, can you lie to our children and tell them that I spent their dinner money on something else instead of gambling? And the husband might say, no, tell them the truth. Wife, you know, might say, oh, why won't you lie for your wife? All husbands lie for their wife. When you don't do what they expect you to do, go against your confidence by saying things like, everybody else will do it, so why won't you? Next up, you're diagnosed with major issues. Not by a doctor, by the narcissist. So when a narcissist is lying or manipulating a friend, a coworker, a loved one, whatever, and doesn't get their way, well, the narcissist may just turn up the intensity by questioning the person's sanity, their entire self. You might be called paranoid, you might be called stressed out, you might be called too sensitive or hormonal. A narcissist might even tell you that you need therapy or meds to get through it. Again, it's all about being in control. It's not about anything else. It's about the narcissist being in control. The narcissist does not care that it hurts you. The narcissist actually is kind of amused by that sometimes. It's all about control. They will do anything to stay in control, even at the expense of people they claim to love. They will go so far as to not even know their own child. That's how far they will go in order to get what they want. You feel me? Next up, you doubt your own beliefs and perceptions. You're told often by the narcissist that what you know is true isn't. So for example, if your narcissistic mother would tell you that your significant other is a big fat loser and you need to dump him after a while or her, after a while you might start to believe it and you might even end up sabotaging your relationship with that person because you question your own judgment. Thanks to, of course, regular conditioning from childhood and then during visits, phone calls, and emails with your mother. You have to learn to trust yourself again. Along the same line, and this is another sign of PTSD or CPTSD, you can't remember anything anymore. So the narcissist, as we all know, is infamous for their selective memory, right? They will deny that they've said something that upset you, especially if you say, hey, you really upset me. Even if you directly confront them, they will deny it. In fact, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they might say to you, you're a big old piece of crap. And you turn around and look at them and say, did you really just say I'm a big old piece of crap? And they would say, no, no, I didn't say that. That's not what I said. And even if you had them on a recording saying it, they would say, well, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So anyway, the point is they, they deny their, their bad behaviors. Uh, and, and, and sometimes they'll promise, okay, I'll do something different and they don't. Maybe they, they acknowledge it. They say, okay, yeah, I did. I shouldn't have said that. But then later they might deny it again, you know, or deny it later as, as, while having admitted it during. A narcissist might also use creative language to downplay his behavior and act as though your reaction is totally out of line. Like I said, they'll act like your reaction to their abuse isn't normal or rational, but it is. See, that's the thing. You're not crazy. Next up, you lie to keep the peace. You aren't a liar by nature, and you don't lie to other people in your life. Not about anything major anyway, but due to extreme stress that has been upsetting you and, and angering the narcissist or whatever, the stress that has come into your life because the narcissist is so easily angered and upset by everything. You might find yourself lying. You might find yourself at least bending the truth with the narcissist in order to avoid the verbal and the physical abuse that is sure to follow any discussion. And or situation that the narcissist deems unacceptable or against his or her rules. You feel me? Next up, you stop trying to be hurt. That's a big, big red flag. As humans, we are programmed to share our experiences and our thoughts with the people in our lives. When you're dealing with a narcissist and there are signs that you're being gaslighted, well, you eventually might just give up. You stop talking about yourself around the narcissist and depending on the depth of your relationship with him or her, you might even stop talking about yourself 
altogether. It's terrible and you shouldn't allow this to continue if you're here now. The reason is because one day when you're out in the world, someone might ask you a question about yourself and you're stumped. You don't even know how to talk about yourself anymore and you wouldn't even want to because you're so insecure because of what the narcissist has put you through. You deserve better, my friend. Next up, you start thinking maybe you really are the crazy one. That's another red flag. The intensity of a narcissist manipulation tactics can really get to a person. And when you are looking for a solution, as in a way to just end the disagreement or the argument in the moment, huh, you might just convince yourself, you know what, maybe the narcissist is right. You know, maybe there are things I could be doing better. Maybe his or her behavior was a logical reaction to my mistakes. No, they weren't. Maybe you start to believe that you're the one who owes the narcissist an apology. And when you do apologize, the narcissist will probably eventually accept your apology, but only later <laughs> he or she will throw that bad behavior that you just apologized for that you didn't really commit back in your face when it serves him or her, of course. Next up, you're depressed. As the narcissist wears down a victim, he or she may become incredibly depressed and anxious. You'll constantly question yourself and you'll feel pretty hopeless. If you're in this situation, you might feel exhausted from the roller coaster ride that your narcissist has just taken you on. You might even think that you're a little bit oversensitive thanks to the NPD manipulation tactics that you're being subjected to. So you get confused, you start to feel disoriented, and thanks to all those references to your paranoia and memory issues, you're likely to seek help for depression rather than the actual problem, which of course is the gaslighting narcissist in your life. Today we're going to talk about, like I said, seven different tactics that commonly are used by gaslighters in relationships. We're going to start with one of the most obvious ones, the biggest, most painful one maybe, uh, and that is to dominate you, to control you. The narcissist will behave as though you deserve nothing at all when it comes to having choices, opinions. Anytime you have a choice or an opinion to make, to state or make, the narcissist will minimize you and attack you. They lie to you, they manipulate you, they coerce you in order to keep you in a constant state of insecurity and fear. When you live in a state of fear, you'll have almost no choice but to submit to their will and that's exactly what they want. Because what happens is that you actually begin to doubt your own perception, like I said, of reality and question your ability to make choices reasonably, your ability to function on a healthy, normal level. And once you start to do that, the narcissist gains control over you. Now let's move on to number two. I'm going to call number two crumbs of goodness. Okay. And what I mean is every now and then you'll get a little hope. Oh my gosh, maybe things are going to go back to normal or how they used to be. Maybe the narcissist is going to be kinder from now on. The narcissist will give you little glimmers of who they used to be or who you thought you signed up to be with. And it's just all false hope. They make you believe that maybe things are going to get better. And believe it or not, this is another form of gaslighting. They will occasionally treat you with kindness. They'll be a little gentle to you. They might even throw a compliment your way, give you a tiny taste of validation. They might even be really, really nice and they might even show some sort of superficial remorse to you. And you'll go, oh, maybe it isn't that bad. Maybe I can make it through this. It's going to be okay, right? Not really. It is a temporary maneuvering tactic that they're using to manipulate you and control you back into submission. This one often comes up anytime you think to yourself, you know what, I'm done, I'm out of here. That's when they'll start doing this. It's similar to hoovering. You know what I'm talking about? The worst part of this one is that they often use it to further make you dependent on them and this kind of increases the enmeshment that you have. So it's even harder to leave them when this tactic is used and I think they know it, whether subconsciously or not and I think that depends on where they are on the spectrum. Number three, the narcissist will force you into a codependent relationship. I know we just talked about codependency but this is a little different. What they do is they require you to get their approval for everything. They might do this by making it really hard on you when you don't in the beginning of the relationship. Well, how dare you make, you know, bratwurst for dinner? I don't like bratwurst. You should have known that. And, and the next time, you know, how dare you, you know, cook a vegan meal? You know I need meat with my dinner. <laughs> Whatever. The point is they will begin to pick at small things and that you will become so paranoid of triggering their fear and anger that your first step is always 
What do you think, narcissist? Is this okay with you? Codependent is defined by the dictionary as excessive emotional or psychological reliance on a partner. Your narcissist exploits this, constantly pulling your strings, pushing your buttons to force you to be insecure, anxious, and worried, and not be able to function with your own thoughts and feelings. You must always obtain their opinion before you can do anything. And that's exactly what they want because guess what it gives them? Do you know? Control. Yes. So by forming a codependent relationship with you, they keep you in a constant state of fear, constant state of vulnerability, and they constantly invalidate you. Number four, a narcissist will wear you down. That's a technique. Sometimes they do this by depriving you of sleep, keeping you up in the middle of the night or waking you up in the middle of the night to actually abuse you. I did a whole video on that called sleep abuse. They stay on the offensive in order to constantly have you in a state of high stress, high anxiety. Your adrenaline's always going. Eventually you get, you're exhausted. You might even say to people or to yourself all the time, oh my God, I'm so exhausted. And when you do that, you become discouraged. You become pessimistic. You resign yourself to this is my life. You stay scared. You stay debilitated. You're always doubting yourself. Everything you think, feel, and say, is you're doubting it. You start to question your own perception of reality. You start to question your own identity. You start to question the world around you and wonder, am I seeing this right or am I crazy? That's exactly what the narcissist wants. Number five, the narcissist lies to you. And not just lies, but sometimes just exaggerates the truth to the point that you believe it because there's a kernel of truth in it. So it starts like this. They create a narrative about you. And, and it's like something's wrong with you. You're not good enough. And they tell it to you over and over again. They tell it to themselves over and over again. And you begin to be in a constant state of being on the defense. For example, if they think you're a terrible housekeeper, every single time they're in the house and every single time they see anything that looks like not perfect, they'll point it out. Did you really leave that mess on the floor? God, you're such a terrible housekeeper. Did you really leave that spot on the stove? God, you're such a terrible housekeeper. Why haven't you taken out the trash yet? God, you're such a terrible housekeeper. They tell you this over and over. You're such a terrible housekeeper. And guess what? You start to think, God, I'm a terrible housekeeper. Same thing could happen to you from a narcissist at work. If you are working in a company and let's say you run a department, you know, that makes widgets and somebody over here from the Wingle department is like, the widget department is a complete joke. I cannot even begin to wonder why they pay this, this department. Why are you even over there? And they start to slowly tear you down, that narrative. The widget department doesn't matter. The widget department is no good. And pretty soon, you and maybe other people in the widget department are freaking out going, oh my gosh, we're sucky. Well, it's not the truth. It's just the case that the narcissist came after you because the narcissist maybe was threatened by you or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's a false narrative the narcissist gave to you and you started to believe it because it was constantly going in your head. Same deal with like, say a narcissistic mother. She might, the way you put away the groceries in the house, you put the cans upside down. I told you to put the cans right side up. How come we keep going through this over and over again? You know what I'm saying? It's one thing after another. It's a constant, it's a narrative. They create a negative narrative about you and then they begin to believe it and they begin to ask you to believe it. And you do because you don't know any different. Of course, this brings me to number six. They repeat it again and again and again. So they constantly, if they find a tactic that works on you, they repeat it. If they find a narrative they like about you, even if it's a narrative that makes you look terrible, which it inevitably will be because it's a narcissist, guess what? They're going to repeat it to you over and over again. It keeps you on the defense. It keeps them on the offense. It keeps the stress levels in the relationship high and your satisfaction level non-existent. In fact, you stop caring about your satisfaction level because you're so freaking exhausted. It allows them to control and dominate you on every single level. This brings me to number seven, escalation. So when you come to them and you go, hey, listen, I know you're cheating on me. I saw you kissing another person in the street, let's say. You have irrefutable evidence. You saw it with your own eyes. There's no doubt about it. Maybe you, you even picked up your cell phone and took a picture of it. And you say, see, I showed, see, see, there you are kissing this other person. How can you deny that? Guess what? 
They will. They'll lie. They'll escalate the lie. They'll say, that's not me. That's just somebody who looks like me. Or they'll say, well, that's my sister. Even though you've been together 20 years, you never met a sister. Or they'll say, oh, that's just somebody from work. And I wasn't really kissing her. I just happened to look. It happened to look like that because I leaned over to whatever lie they want to tell you. And the more you don't believe them, the further they'll escalate the lies. They will flatly deny that they were even involved or maybe that they were even there. This, of course, helps you feel crazier because the more they say it, the more they deny it, the more you're likely to go, maybe I am wrong. Maybe, you know, he seems really sincere. She seems like she really means it. Maybe I was mistaken. Maybe that person I've been with for 20 years has no freaking idea. You know, maybe I have no idea what they look like. Right. They escalate the lies in order to further hold out. They refute evidence with things like denial. Yeah. Blame. Well, I only did that because you haven't kissed me in a month. More false claims, like that was my sister, my cousin, my aunt, my long-lost mother. They twist the facts. And what it all comes down to is they are trying to create enough doubt and confusion in your mind that you might believe, A, that you're crazy enough to have been mistaken, that that wasn't really them kissing a strange person, and B, that you feel confused. And because they are so adamant and so strong about this is really not the truth, what choice do you have but to believe them? And if you dare to question them, they smack you right down. Maybe not physically, but they do it. So, there you go. Those are seven gaslighting techniques that narcissists commonly use against us. Ever have a narcissist blame you for something that they did wrong and then feel justified in bullying you about that thing? Ever have what a narcissist go so far in that situation as to use your own words against you? If so, this video is for you. We call it narcissistic deflection. Unfortunately, this is a very common thing that happens in a relationship with a narcissist where they deflect blame onto you in order to take it off of themselves for something, right? They don't want to take responsibility for their own stuff. It's when you're being abused but your abuser tries to convince you that you're the abusive one. Or maybe, if you're female, they blame it on that time of the month. They accuse you of just having horrible PMS. They couldn't have done anything wrong. It's obviously your fault. Or maybe they'll just label you unreasonable or crazy or an overreactor. They'll say you're making it all up. They assign all blame literally for every issue or concern in the relationship to you and they become offended and also angry if they don't think it seems like you want to accept all the blame and responsibility for everything wrong in the relationship. If you dare to question them or God forbid get upset with them, they will accuse you of being the abuser. They'll do anything possible to run a good smear campaign on you, telling everybody around you that you're crazy, just how crazy you are and how difficult you can be. And they'll make you look and feel like someone you're really just not. Let's talk about flipping the script, shall we? I like to call it the narcissistic flip. So that's one of the most effective types of gaslighting or manipulation from a narcissist. And that is when a narcissist sort of flips the script on you during an argument. I have dubbed it the narcissistic flip because it's exactly what it is. They flip it around on you, right? And it's a regularly employed manipulation techniques for many narcissists and other types of abusers. The flip happens most often when you make a valid point or have the nerve to question anything the narcissist says, does, thinks, or feels. That's about the time that everything turns back around on you and suddenly you're the one who's sorry. How about that? Mostly that you bothered engaging in yet another pointless argument with a narcissist. Denial, my friend, it ain't just a river in Egypt. Okay. Real quick though, let's define denial for our purposes today. In this case, we're talking about the psychological term, which means that someone literally claims that something did happen or didn't happen when the opposite is true. So in the case of narcissists, they use denial. Denial of their own behavior, denial of events and situations when it's convenient for them. And almost always in situations where they, the narcissist, could be considered at fault for like literally anything. Feel me? Negative, especially. If they can take credit for something, that's a whole other ball of wax for them. Denial can be used as a part of the whole brainwashing process by a narcissist. It's the same process a lot of narcissists use just to control their victims. And if you think about it, while they may have originally employed denial to avoid taking responsibility for their own behavior, a lot of narcissists have discovered that denial can be a very effective part of gaslighting 
as part of the process, right? Narcissists will intentionally say things to provoke reactions from you. They will bait you and then they will wait for a response. If you don't act quickly or dramatically enough, they may poke you and aggressively antagonize you until you just explode. Yeah. Then they tell you you're crazy, that you need help, that something is just plain wrong with you. How do you deal with this kind of manipulation? Obviously, almost always, going no contact is the ideal solution. We already know this. I'm not, I don't have to tell you this. You already know, right? When dealing with almost any toxic narcissist. But in the real world, there are other circumstances and other things to consider. Sometimes you get stuck dealing with a narcissist who, for whatever reason, you have to co-parent with, or maybe you haven't managed to escape yet, or maybe it's a relative or an in-law and you just can't practically disconnect. You know, it's not practical for you to do that, so you're forced to deal with them. The way to deal with that is to recognize that the narcissist is trying to get you to react. He or she will absolutely use it against you if you do. Let's talk about the blame game, shall we? You've heard of it, right? The blame game? The so-called blame game is just what I've already described. When a narcissist constantly deflects responsibility for their bad behavior and then they project it right onto the nearest victim, which often is the primary source of supply. Have you been there? Of course, this puts you as the primary supply on constant alert and you feel the mental and the physical effects of always being in a state of stress. It affects your blood pressure, your neurological function, and even your ability to eat and sleep. Other physical effects might include changes in weight, getting sick more often, falling ill, all of this stuff. It's been reported quite often by victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse, CPTSD, weight issues, heart issues, fibromyalgia, Lots of things. Check out my videos on that stuff. Let's talk about a few examples of the blame game in action, shall we? A narcissistic wife caught lying to her husband about spending an evening alone with a male colleague. She claims when she found out that she only lied because he always overreacts to everything. We kind of talked about this in our jealousy video, right? In reality, the narcissist's husband lives in fear of her erratic and seemingly unprovoked emotional attacks. And of course, the general invalidation of his character that he suffers on a daily basis. A narcissistic husband then, in my next example, is found to be cheating on his wife, let's say, with her best friend. It happens. When confronted, the narcissistic husband claims that he was treated poorly by his wife, neglected and overly criticized by her. He claims that he tried to fix the marriage, but she'd have none of it. And in reality, he's the one who was mentally abusing her, although he's over there getting all the sympathy, saying she was doing it to him. It's called a smear campaign, my friend. And now he has engaged her friend as a very toxic flying monkey. He has taken her friend from her, engaged her in this mess, and now they're together. You see? Gaslighting, flying monkeys big fat mess. Here's another example. A narcissistic woman has a lunch meeting with a colleague, brand new colleague in the office, and she's secretly a little threatened by this girl, right? She shows up an hour late, the narcissist. When the colleague tries to be like, you know, it would have been great, but I gotta get back to the office. I don't wanna be late back on my second day of work or whatever. She cuts her down for being so uptight, neglecting the opportunity to get to know her. She's like, come on, it's just the office. Just hang out with me here. Let's have lunch now. Nobody will even notice you've been gone. She's secretly a little threatened by her, so wouldn't it do her some good if that person didn't stick around? But this person's too smart, and she says, well, I gotta go. Look, here's some things that you need to know in that situation if you are stuck in that type of relationship, whether it's work-related, romantic, family, or otherwise, right? If you're dealing with a narcissist or otherwise toxic family member or friend, or colleague. You probably have a lot of someone else's thoughts floating around in your head right now, especially if you're one of their sources of primary supply. You might not think you're good enough. You might think that your feelings and your thoughts aren't genuine and relevant to the world. And you might even feel like a big fake when you do try to follow your dreams, simply because you've heard for so long that you are not worthy, that you don't deserve good things, whether you heard this indirectly or directly. If your toxic relationship happens to be family-based, you may have had so much conditioning that you aren't even sure which way is up anymore. The first step to healing is to start with your own head. You have to change those thoughts and those limiting beliefs that are holding you back. So we're going to start right here. When I was in my own toxic family situation, I struggled with feelings of worthlessness, hopelessness, being not good enough, and all kinds of stuff. I felt like nothing I did, nothing I said, nothing I thought, nothing I believed was real or genuine because I was taught that anything came out of my mouth had no credibility, 
had no validity. I was constantly invalidated. I felt like I had to hide who I was in order to conform to the expectations of a toxic family member. But I learned some important lessons as I started that healing process. And I want to share them with you now. If you're currently in this situation, you may have never heard these things. And when you first hear about them, you probably won't even believe me. But these are the truths. And if you need to watch this video again, keep doing it until you get it into your head that these are the truths. Number one, changing your mind will help you change your life. It will change your perspective. It'll change your world. I'm living proof of it. It works. We're going to talk about the top 10 things you need to know if you're in one of these relationships. First thing is you are a legitimate person with legitimate concerns, legitimate thoughts, real feelings, real aspirations, and you can do that shit. Yes, you can, my friend. You are good enough. You don't need anyone's approval. You don't need anyone's endorsement. You don't need anyone to say you're good enough. You don't need anyone to say you're okay, it's okay with them if you do this to succeed. You can get validation through success in your own self-dictated endeavors. It's not about you, it's not your fault. You aren't bad and you aren't broken. You can literally do almost anything you wanna do if you simply decide that you're gonna do it. If you choose to do it, you'll be compelled to take inspired action and my friend, you can make it happen. You have something real to offer to the world. You matter. You have value. You can be exactly what you choose to be. And choosing your own identity doesn't make you lazy, stupid, selfish, entitled, or otherwise unsavory, contrary to what you may have been told. You get to choose your own identity every single day. You get to decide who you are and how far you go in the world. You can compromise for someone you love up to a point. But there's a certain point at which it's time to choose your priorities and choose a path. But you have to remember this. Compromise means that both parties give and bend, and both parties are satisfied with the outcome. It's not compromise to give up everything you love and want in the world in order to keep someone from being mad at you. It's not. That's not how it works. If you were to walk away from the toxic relationship that you're dealing with or that you've recently dealt with, the world's not going to end. In fact, it's going to get a lot brighter for you pretty quickly. It's going to be difficult. And and to be fair, you're going to have some soul searching to do. There's a lot of things that you're going to have to think about. I've got all those things covered for you, but We'll get to that. Personally, I had to re-examine literally everything that I believe to be true. So the thing that makes gaslighting so incredibly effective as a manipulation tactic for a narcissist is that it causes you, the person it's being done to, to actually mistrust your own perception. You could see something in front of your own eyes in the depth of gaslighting and not trust it. It makes you doubt what reality even is and also makes you wonder, Maybe I am crazy. So it's a really good way for a narcissist to target you and get more power over you when they've already established a certain level of power. And in some cases they use gaslighting to establish the power, as in to make you feel like you're not mentally sound enough to deal with stuff yourself. Some examples of gaslighting. Well, maybe brushing off things that should be taken more seriously or telling you that you're crazy or oversensitive or thinking too much or unreasonable or even outright denying things that actually happened. Telling you you misunderstood. It was just a joke like we talked about the other day. Even deliberate overacting or overreacting to things that happen and then jumping down your throat telling you you're too stressed or you're too tired or you're just overthinking it, making you feel silly or making you feel unintelligent. It starts out real small, like I said, real sneaky. You don't always even see it at the beginning. You really go, didn't I, didn't I say, are you sure? You know, you find yourself at first, you're like, this person's crazy. Of course I said this, or of course this happened. But over time, the more insistent they become, the more likely you are to start doubting your reality. And this is the worst thing. Because it's not always clearly abusive, and because very often these little incidents kind of build up slowly over time, kind of like a layer of sand on top of a layer of sand on top of a layer of sand, it's really easy to make you doubt yourself and your perception, or doubt how serious something is. So they stir up a whole bunch of mess in you. They, your emotions are all over the place. You feel guilty, you feel shameful. It's really possible when you put all these things together, for a narcissist to do some pretty terrible things to you in this situation. One of the worst things about gaslighting is that it's, besides the fact that it messes with your head and your feeling of 
sanity and security in the world. Aside from the fact that it can stick you into an unwanted situation, it does incredible damage to your self-esteem and in fact your entire self-identity if it's done over a long period of time. It's gaslighting that causes a lot of the CPTSD we deal with after these relationships with narcissists. And since a lot of us were raised by narcissists or somehow otherwise affected by narcissists in childhood, it's especially easy for people that we're in relationships with today to use gaslighting against us because we already doubt ourselves. We already doubt the world around us. We're already not sure that we're okay to begin with. So how do we protect ourselves? Well, Dana and I discussed this. Take a look. I would try to keep everything in, uh, I have some sort of paper trail. Mm. So like have it all in text messages, on voicemail and email and chat, uh, something that you can go back to because that, that gaslighting, when somebody else starts really rewriting reality, it can just really, you know, spin a person around quickly and it can cause a lot of damage. So, and it's easy to doubt ourselves. Yes. So, um, you know, keeping a paper trail, something that you can go back. I encourage people to write out how you're feeling. So like if you are in a situation that's confusing and you're, you know, you're caught up in that introspection of, is it me or is it them to start writing out like bullet point format things that aren't adding up, you know, oh, this person said that they didn't have children, but then I saw that they actually did have children on Facebook, or they said that they're divorced, but actually they're separated, or that, you know, they said they were an architect, but actually, you know, they're not. So you can keep all of this stuff straight in your mind to just kind of anchor yourself so you can anchor your sanity. And then, yeah, I would start really limiting contact and going, moving towards no contact as quickly as possible. So like Dana said, it's really important to keep a written record of stuff. You can also consider recording things with your phone, keeping a file that way, writing things down. I, I can't tell you how many times I was having a conversation with a narcissist and I actually said to them, I should really start recording our conversations because you literally just said I had a big stupid nose or whatever insult it was and then you literally denied it immediately after. And so when you have some sort of a record, that's one way to maintain your sanity. The written record is especially going to be, and or the recorded record, is especially going to be important when we're talking about things like there might be a situation that could legally be an issue. But even within regular r romantic relationships or otherwise, having a record, even if you never show it to anyone else, is often enough to help you not doubt your sanity, which is really important in this situation. It also allows you to kind of keep track of the arc of the behavior as, as the behavior intensifies, where it happens, things like this. One of my clients once told me that she actually kept a record, a color-coded record of when her narcissist would start fights with her, when he would be nice to her, and it turned out that he was actively starting fights right before his children would visit for the weekend because he didn't want her there while the children were visiting. I found that to be very interesting and very intelligent of her to do that, and I actually made a whole video about it. When you do learn how to recognize gaslighting, you can feel so much more confident in yourself and, and especially if you can learn to enforce your boundary. If someone is insulting you and saying, I'm just kidding, what are you talking about? You can actually say to them, could you explain to me why that joke is funny? Or if someone is hugging you too much at work and it's making you uncomfortable, you can say, you know, I'm really sorry I never told you this before, but I'm not really a very, you know, snuggly kind of person. I'm kind of a, a my dance space, your dance space kind of person. Or if somebody says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to you know, touch your butt or whatever they're trying to say. You can say, I know you're saying it's not on purpose and I, I appreciate that, but since it makes me so uncomfortable, could you stop doing it anyway? Or flat out, listen, I know you're saying this is a joke or that I'm being oversensitive or overreacting. I understand that, but it's kind of important to me. Is there a problem with changing your behavior? Sometimes when you put it to them so blatantly and directly, they almost can't, you know, respond in a, a, a way that's other than what you need to hear in those moments. Obviously, if we're talking about a long-term romantic relationship or a parental narcissist, very often they'll just, oh, why are you manipulating me? You're just trying to hurt me, but da, 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 da. you know, they'll go into their narcissistic injury and narcissistic rage. But when we're talking about a professional situation or even a friend situation, very often this can work quite effectively. Bottom line, don't be afraid to be defiant. Even if you know for sure that that person is going to become very upset and angry, especially in a personal relationship, stick to your story if you know that it's true. Don't allow them to convince you otherwise. Recognize that the gaslighter is not going to be held accountable 
at least not by him or herself. They won't see your point of view and they won't take responsibility for their own part in this whole deal. That's how they roll. They'll never be like, oh yeah, I get it. Or you're right, you have a total point. As much as I would like to tell you that they would, they won't. It's unfortunate, but it's true. So knowing that you're not going to get acknowledgement is important and that's kind of why sometimes I just walk away from these people. I don't waste my breath or my energy on them. Logic and reason cannot and will not be applied when we're talking about a narcissist. This is important to remember. You gotta let go of your need for things to change. Let go of your need for the narcissist to become a different person because they won't become a different person. It's wishful thinking. It's just making your life harder. Of course we all want things to make sense. Of course we all want to be standing on solid ground with the person that we consider you know, our friend, our, our partner, our, our co-worker, whatever, but it doesn't work with these people. You cannot expect them to be regular people. You cannot expect them to respect you and your feelings and your needs. You must understand that they are limited in that way. And when you can see them as limitations and you can see that they are limited, maybe it's a little bit easier for you to just kind of turn around and walk away from that mess. But if you can't walk away from it, these techniques that I explained to you today will help. When it comes to gaslighting, the bottom line here is the ground will always be shifting beneath you as long as you're involved with that person. There's no center. There's no rules. The only way that you can maintain your sanity if you cannot walk away from that person is to know black from white, to know up from down, blue from green, whatever. Know the truth. Be strong in the truth. Write it down if you need to, Google it if you need to, whatever makes you feel secure in your knowledge of the situation, of the world around you. Know the truth and stick to the truth. Do not allow a narcissist or anyone else to gaslight you into submission. Don't allow a narcissist to take your life from you and take your sanity from you with gaslighting. You, you stick to reality. Let the narcissist go on and play their silly games and pretend that things aren't as they are. You stick to reality. Let them be the crazy one. This brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you experienced gaslighting before? How did you deal with it? Are you going through it now? How are you handling it? Share your thoughts, your ideas, and your experiences in the comment section below. Who knows, you might just help another survivor on the same path as you do a little better today. And don't forget, I've done tons of videos about gaslighting and what it's all about. So I'm going to include some links for you above and some links in the description below. Make sure you take a look at those because I've talked about it in great detail from every angle. That's all I've got for you right now. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot, take it now, and the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.